Hey guys, Calvin here with another Creative Congo tutorial. Today I'm bringing you a how-to guide for a new script that I'm putting out that uh, encompasses the time offset expression functionality that Jesse discussed in his earlier tutorial. So uh, check out his tutorial for a, an in-depth explanation of how the technique works and what goes into it. Uh, but for this, I'm just going to focus on how to use my script to make cool uh, time offset animations like the one you're seeing right now. So let's start by seeing what this script actually does. So as you can see here, we have our animation layer, which is our top layer, and that's got two keyframes on the position, uh, and then this expression loop out ping pong, which is causing it to just loop back and forth between these two keyframes. And as you can see, our child layers are following that animation layer at uh, a, a predetermined offset. So they're all uh, 0.2 seconds behind the original uh, animation. If, if we watch it here, you can see it creates a nice little, nice little animation. So if we actually look at the animation layer, we see that there's a, an offset slider which is attached to it. And this drives how far behind the original animation each child layer uh, is going to be. So if I were to make that, you know, a, a bigger negative number, let's say negative 0.7, uh, and I ram preview that, you can see that the delay is actually a lot less. It, it sort of creates an interesting effect. Uh, and then if, let's say, we make it negative 0.1 and ram preview that, we will see that the animation uh, actually is a lot tighter. So they, they follow at a very short distance behind. So it, it creates a very different looking animation. Okay, so now you've downloaded the script from uh, the site. It's in the, the comments below on creativecongo.com. Uh, the first thing that you have to do is to install the script. And all you have to do for that is to copy it into your script UI panels directory, which actually, as you can see here, lives in applications, uh, whatever version of Adobe After Effects you're running, whether it's CS6, CS5, CC, uh, then there is a scripts directory, and then inside that you have the script UI panels directory. Uh, and I put my scripts into the script UI panels directory because that instantly makes them uh, dockable UI panels. I do that so that I can just dock them against other windows. I have one window where I keep all my scripts that I use on a regular basis, and then they're always, always open. So copy that in there, and then you'll need to close After Effects and restart, because the first time you copy a new script into that directory, the only way for After Effects to actually see that script is to close and, and reopen. We'll start with uh, our clean project. So uh, all we have is our background layer, a whole bunch of these square objects, and one of them that is animating in a looping pattern back and forth. So the first thing we'll do is open our script from the window dropdown. So we'll go to window and then scroll down to CS underscore Congo time offset expression. And so we'll click on that and that will open our script window. And so you see here there's a whole bunch of uh, things that you can select and some properties. And so let's let's dive right in. So the first thing that we have here in our time offset expression window is offset amount. And this is just the amount of time that the offset will, will be. So if you want uh, it following quickly behind, you make this smaller. And if you want it to be slower or a, a more of a delay after the original animation, you make this larger. And you'll notice that this is a negative number here. So we're considering this an absolute uh, value from the current point in time. So if you want to before this, you have to do a negative number, and if you want to maybe lead the animation, you can do a positive number. You can specify your offset amount in seconds or in frames, and it'll do a little conversion between the two uh, if you make a, a selection here. Some people like to think, uh, you know, I'm doing 24 frames per second, so half a second is 12 frames, so I want to do it frames. And, and once you've uh, applied your expression, this value will be baked into it. So, uh, you know, pick the one that you want to use sort of going forward, because once you apply the the animation, you're not going to be able to change this selection. Then you have a link expression to the layer above or layer below. Now what this means is where is my animation going to be? Is it the layer above me or is it the layer below me? 
So if it's the layer above me, then you need to stack your animation layer at the top of the layers that you want to apply it to. And if it's layer below, then you're going to put your animation layer at the bottom of the layers that you want to apply the animation to. So in this example right here, layer 5 actually holds my animation, as you can see. So if this were layer below, I would want it at the bottom. And if it were layer above, then I would want to have it at the top as it is now. The next thing we have is Attach Expression Controller 2. Now this option, we can say I want to uh, apply the slider directly to my animation layer, uh, or I can create a null object that's going to hold my animation expression controller. Uh, I like to do this because sometimes I'll just put a, a null object at the top of my layer list and then just put a whole bunch of expression controls on that and then everything that I link will be off to that. So if I want to fine tune some animations or adjust things here or there, I just have to look directly at that one layer and I can adjust them all. The next thing is uh, we have a list here of all of our transform properties that we can apply this expression to. Now this is a, a list box and you can actually do multiple selections. So let's say you want to do it to the opacity scale and anchor point, you can do that, or just the position and the rotation, or maybe just the scale, or maybe we want to do it to all of them. And also, if you haven't selected any, when you try and apply it, it asks you if, tells you first that you haven't selected any, and secondly, if you want to apply it to all the properties. So if you just sort of want to batch apply all the properties, you don't have to do any selections. Finally, we have a drop down for background layer. You know, you might have one background that you don't want to be touched at all. So if you select that, whatever layer is selected in this drop down, it will never have the expression applied to it and it will never be pre comped uh, if you should choose the pre compose animation. What that will do is whatever your final animation will just pre comp it up, create a new comp, and put all the layers in that composition. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there's uh, a, a disabled input box and button, and when you click pre-compose animation, these actually become enabled. Uh, and how these work is when you're pre-composing your animation, you know, you can give it a, a name that's meaningful or that helps you remember later on what that animation is, is all about or which one it is. Um, and then we've also got this suffix, which is underscore zero zero one. Uh, and this is just a quick little shortcut to ensure, uh, if you want, that your pre-comp animation names are actually unique. So every time that I pre-compose an animation, uh, you'll see that this value actually increments. Um, and so, you know, for every new one that you make, you can, you, you, it has a unique name. And if you want to uh, reset that back to one, you just click the reset button. You know, it, it may create some uh, names that are the same, which isn't a huge problem. It's just, it's more for you to help you keep track of your, your different animations. So that's what all the options here are for this. And so let's get into actually using this. So to set up your, your comp properly, you need an animation layer, some number of child layers that will follow that animation layer, and potentially a background layer. So now that we have our comp set up, there are three ways to apply the animation expression to your comp. The first is to make no selection at all. So you leave the selection completely blank in your comp, and you, know, you set up your options as you want them, and you click Apply Offset Expression. And the first thing it does is tells you that you haven't made a selection, and you can click No to go back and try again, or if you click Yes, it will apply to all layers. Uh, and then you'll see that for all the layers minus our background layer, we actually have our animation applied. Now the second way that you can select layers is by selecting a, a group of layers, so a contiguous group of layers. So let's say I want to do shape layer 4 through shape layer 1. Uh, and the way I'm making my selection here is I am selecting the layers that I want to be the child layers of my animation. So the animation needs to be, if you've selected link to the layer above, it needs to be directly above your selection or directly below your selection if you've chosen layer below. So if you've made a, a contiguous selection like this, and we'll apply, and we'll see that that has applied the animation properly. And now the third way to make selections is to select a random number of layers to be your animation. So to do that, you'll have to first 
at the top, select your animation layer. So we always want to include our animation layer. And then we'll also do layers 3 and layer 1. Now, when I say apply offset expression, first it tells me that I've, I've selected a non-contiguous group of layers and that if, if I choose yes to continue, that we will automatically be pre-composing this because it, the animation expression relies on layers being stacked directly on top of each other. So if you do a non-contiguous selection, you can still do that, but it just has to pre-compose it to work for this particular expression. So we say yes, and we see that it precomposes and creates an animation layer, leaves four and two behind before precomposing five, three, and one. So those are the three ways to select layers and to apply the animation, and you can just play around with the different options. So if you want to make a non-contiguous selection, but make sure that there's a null object to control your animation, just select that option, click the button, and you'll see that in our pre-comp, we have a null object that holds the slider value. And it, we also contains our animation layer with the keyframes right here, as well as the two child layers that we selected. And the animation works. So play around with this, you know, enjoy, and uh, please email to the email address in the comments below if you come across any bugs or any have any questions about how this works, and I hope you enjoy it, so take care.